Well, today's panel was developed to highlight some of the high-profile contracts heading to Detroit over the next year. Now, while all of our meetings and events are really important, we selected this panel today because hosting their events in Detroit will really leave lasting impacts on the community, and that really is because of who these events will be attracting to the city. All right, it is time for us to get ready. The panel today is going to share a bit about their event and why they selected Detroit and what it really takes for a city to be a successful host. So I look at this almost as insider trading information. You're gonna get the inside tips on what's going on. I'm gonna pull it out of them if I gotta pull my teeth. <laughs> um, so first of all, let's get started by introducing this esteemed panel this morning. And by the way, this panel, of course, like many very accomplished people, they have really, really impressive bios, and you can read the full biographical information on our website, and that is annualmeeting/visitdetroit.com slash speakers, in case you want to dig into all their details. First up this morning, from the American Bus Association, we have Peter Pantuso, President and CEO. As CEO, Peter is responsible for the association's day-to-day -day operations. He also serves as president of the National Bus Traffic Association and of the ABA Foundation. Now, Peter has 40 years of experience in association work at all levels. Prior to joining ABA, Peter directed the government and regulatory affairs efforts at the Rubber Manufacturers Association and the National Confectioners Association and was a regional state lobbyist for the Glass Packaging Institute. Under Peter's leadership, the ABA has grown to become North America's leading and largest motor coach tour and travel association, representing 3,800 members and 65% of all the motor coaches that you see on the road are theirs. And our next panelist for today, well, let's give them a round of applause. You'll meet them in a moment, but let's applaud. Those are true accomplishments in terms of um, continuing to grow our economy. And our next panelist comes to us from the National Collegiate Athletic Association. He is Anthony Holman, Managing Director of Championships and Alliance. In his current role, Anthony is responsible for setting the strategic direction for 30 NCAA championships and global oversight for playing rules and officiating of all 90 NCAA championships. He's been with the NCAA for 12 years in the Championships and Alliance group. Prior to joining the NCAA, Anthony worked in professional sports for five years, including the NBA. He's the former executive director of the Quad City Sports Committee, and prior to that, he spent nine years with the Illinois High School Association. Anthony has also been active in the Olympic movement, serving on the board for both USA Swimming as well as USA Wrestling. All right, give him a round of applause. And our final panelist today is Patrick Higgins, Senior Vice President of Industry Relations for Connect. Patrick got his start in the tourism industry as a member of the Salt Lake Organizing Committee for the 2002 Winter Olympic Games. After he spent over a decade in various CVB sales capacities in Reno, Tahoe, Palm Springs, and as well as Salt Lake City. In 2009, he left the CVB world to assist a number of high-profile organizations and sporting with their events. In 2012, Patrick joined the Connect executive team, and in that time, Connect's events portfolio has grown to over 32 annual events. Connect events attract 5,000 to 7,000 hoteliers, CVBs, and service providers annually. All right, and in his current role, Patrick assists CVBs, hotel brands, and travel and tourism service providers in the successful design and implementation of business development strategies, planners focus groups as well, and hospitality advo advocacy campaigns. Now, in reaction to COVID-19, Higgins leads the Connect Back to Business DMO Task Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our panel to the stage. Okay, does everyone have water? Because we're going to get a lot of talking done, okay? <laughs> Are we ready to go? Okay, let's talk. This is really important, and as I said, in terms of it being almost like insider trading, I feel this is an opportunity for everyone here to be just really better informed about what 
made the difference. So let's start off by giving the baseline information. Why don't we start here? And would you please just describe um, what meeting you're actually bringing here to the city? Sure, it's called uh, American Bus Marketplace. We've been doing it for about 40 years. And although we're a bus association, we're also a group travel association. And so our American Bus Marketplace actually brings together buyers and sellers of travel. So bus operators, tour operators that want to plan trips, they come to the show to plan their trips for the next year, maybe for months ahead, but the next year or two years, and they meet with the travel industry on one-on-one, -on -one, seven-minute appointments. It's an appointment show, much like speed dating. We do about 100,000 speed dates or appointments okay. over three days. But when we come to Detroit, we're bringing for the first time something called Bus World. It's an international bus show that happens in six different countries, and it's going to happen in North America for the first time okay. next February when we get here. Okay, very good. Speed dating, did you get that? I, that's, I can really, I'm getting that vision of um, getting people together to get that foundational information. Okay, very good. And Mr. Holman, please describe the event that you will be hosting. Sure, um, we're fortunate to have uh, several events over the, um, the next couple of years that are, that are gonna be here, but the one uh, most specifically um, coming up in, in about a month is the Division I uh, Men's Wrestling Championship that'll be held at Little Caesars Arena, where we'll have uh, uh, the top 330 wrestlers from Division I institutions from across the country um, uh, competing, uh, vying for the NCAA championship. Uh, this event uh, routinely um, draws over in the, in, in the area of 16 to 18,000 fans per session, so over 100,000 fans for, uh, for the weekend. Uh, we will have direct spending impact of over $4 million uh, with hotels and uh, travel in and um, meals and accommodations and things of that nature, uh, bringing in uh, officials, um, workers um, uh, on top of uh, on top of, as well as fans. Uh, it'll be nationally broadcast on ESPN, uh, all six sessions over three days. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to to having a great time here. Okay, very good. And ESPN sounds great, Mr. Higgins. Uh, as Connect. you mentioned, we have. 30 plus events we do annually. This is the big one. So Connect uh, Marketplace will be August 8th through the 10th. Uh, bring about 4,000 meeting and uh, event and sports executives to town. And we'll be breaking them up really in four different tracks. So we'll have a corporate meeting planner track, an association track, a sports tourism track, and then a specialty market track. So we anticipate about 12 to 1,300 meeting planners, all of which have the ability to bring their own events back to Detroit. In addition to that, we'll have uh, different uh, destination marketing organizations, hotels and resorts will be coming to meet with them as well. Okay, very good. Um, you got all that? Are you taking notes a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> so let's talk about, it's what, 21 degrees for a low and 26 degrees for a high today. Detroit, you know, this is a fantastic place and we've got our weather, but everyone here is hardy on the audience and on the panel. But so why did you choose Detroit though? I mean, because you obviously have other options. We can start with you, Mr. Pantuso. Sure. Um, you know, I was here for another industry event probably 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's the last time there was a group travel event. And I thought it would be so great to come back here. But what I think really sold me is when I was here for ASAE a number of years ago. Okay. And the city was just shining. I mean, it was a it was going through this renaissance. A lot of new product coming on board, great facilities, not only the convention center, obviously, but the hotels. And there's a spirit here that, that we don't see in every place that we go. Um, we're used to going to places in January and February. That's typically when we have our show, and we're used to cold climate. So the weather really doesn't matter. It's the facilities that matter. And you've got everything that, that we need, including a vibrant tourism community. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it takes for us. I mean, we're more than a convention. You know, as the other gentleman described, you know, not only do we bring people here and have a large economic footprint when we're here, but our people, our tour operators, our bus operator, bring people back over and over again. So we need that spirit. We need that tourism environment in addition to the convention facility. And we're going to circle back because I'm going to ask you to define some of those terms in terms of what you mean specifically by great facilities and what the spirit is, that essence. We're going to try to get them to put that into words. Mr. Holman, why, why Detroit? Well, I was pro promised a bubble for us in March. Were you? So I haven't seen it yet. We're still so working on the bubble. You guys bubble. have that? You still working on it? All right. Well, you got about a month to get it done. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, seriously, the the, uh, the geographic footprint is uh, is big for us uh, in the wrestling community. This is Big Ten country. Big Ten is uh, wrestling is is huge. 
the drivability and the, the, the ease of uh, commute for many of our fans, our, our, our fan base, it's easy to get to. Uh, and those that are West Coast and East Coast, the number of flights coming in into your, your airport made it desirable. Um, the, the location of Little Caesars Arena and the proximity to uh, hotel, uh, hotels for our participants uh, was also attractive. And then certainly the enthusiasm and the excitement that, that we feel when we, we, when we brought uh, our folks here to, to check out the venues and the community was really impressive. Okay, so. okay very good. Mr. Higgins? Well, the, the Visit Detroit team promised us 68 degrees, no rain, and um, no, really- I want to meet that team. <laughs> um, really, it came down to a combination of things. One, the convention package and the convention center and the hotels made tremendous sense to us. Um, secondly, the, the relationships that we have with Visit Detroit, we know that we're in good hands. Uh, we know our attendees are in good hands. We've seen them at other industry shows, and we've seen how hard they work and we know that we're, we're gonna have a great experience in August. But I think lastly, our best reviewed shows for the last 15 years are held in cities where the attendees think they know based off whatever reason, but then when they get there, they're pleasantly surprised by what they didn't know. And when we were out here for planning visits, things like that, we thought Detroit really fits in this category where attendees have either been here or it's been a while, maybe 10, 15 years, or they haven't been and they're just going off of headlines what they think they know, um, but, but really our, we, we love getting comments afterwards where attendees are pleasantly surprised by what they experience while they're in town. Okay, well that's, that's great to hear, right? And I love that, that you will have almost like a reveal. So it kind of gives that, that extra essence and um, I'm sure that makes it even more memorable for your attendees. Well, let's, if we can pinpoint, and I know this is tough, a question to ask, what is the ultimate, the most important? Um, and we were talking uh, before the program started about, you know, when you plan an event and you think this is going to be larger, but we plan our own little events at home, micro. We talk about the food, we talk about the finance, the budget, and we talk about who's going to have fun. You want it to be a great experience. What would you say is really the breaking point? What, what is the key piece to determining where your meeting site will be? You want me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's a number of factors that go into it, and some of them I think were already mentioned. I mean, the, the drivability, the, the, the airport system to be able to get in direct from almost anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of members in Canada. We've got a few hundred members in Canada, so obviously accessibility to those members as well is, is certainly important to us. Um, you know, it goes, back to, it goes back to the facilities when you're here because that's what people see. When we're planning a meeting, the most important thing for us at the American Bus Association is the business that takes place between the buyers and sellers. That, mm -hmm. that speed dating environment is the opportunity to do your sales in the group travel business for the next year or two, at least to plant that seed and start that process. Okay. So if we've got everything else that goes with it, they come here and they have a great time. The restaurants are great, the facilities are great. There's lots of things for them to see and do because it's not just a city convention, it's a regional convention, it's a state in, I, event. Okay. Um, if they can see and experience all that Michigan and Detroit and the region have to offer, they're gonna be excited and they're gonna be excited to bring their own customers back by bus or as groups in the future. Okay, I just wanna get just a little vision of this speed dating moment yeah. that's happening. So is this something that it would require that you choose a hotel that can accommodate this large ballroom center meeting space? We're, yeah, we'll do it at the convention center. We need, for, for the marketplace, the speed dating, if you will, we need about 200,000 square feet. And then for our bus world show, we need at least another 100,000 square feet, maybe more if it grows. So because it's our first one, we're not quite sure. Um, that speed dating area, if you will, by itself is about 100,000 square feet. And what's unusual, at our show compared to a lot of conventions is in a typical convention, the seller is in a booth and the buyer walks around. Right. In our convention, the buyer is in the booth and the seller comes around on these seven minute speed dating uh -huh. appointments. So you'll have to come and check it out. I like this idea, right? <laughs> speed dating. <laughs> okay, Mr. Holman, what would be the key, one of the key factors um, in just making the choice? What's gonna push you over the edge and say, yes, Detroit? Yeah, for us, it, uh, we're, we're sports, right? So it all starts and ends with the facility. Um, doesn't do us any good to say, hey, you've got great bass fishing here and we're looking for a golf facility, right? So right. it's all about what we need in the facility. Little Caesars for wrestling, for example, uh, we, we lay down eight mats. Um, so we need a pretty large footprint in the, in the venue. Uh, so uh, arenas that have Olympic 
uh, sheets of ice, 100 by 200 or larger, are important um, for, for us for, to, to get the mats down without losing um, uh, much capacity for, for fans to be there because you know, we're among friends. If it, doubt, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Right. So it's gotta, it's gotta, it's gotta be a, a financially viable uh, option for us uh, as well. And then the things that I mentioned before, can our, can our fans, our participants get there easily? Um, what are the hotel um, property opportunities? One thing that, that has over in, in recent years has become more and more important, it seems like a, it's a small thing, but is the community willing to flex um, in, in terms of hospitality? What's that mean? Um, the, uh, our sessions may not end until 10.30, 11 o'clock. Will restaurants still be open? Um, mm. We may need to, um, there's a session that doesn't start until one o'clock. Can folks still stay in their hotel room until checkout? So those things may seem small, but that's a huge thing because that's the feedback that we get from our teams, from our participants. And when a community is willing to make those types of accommodations, uh, that, that, that's, the winning, that's the winning sauce, if you will. Okay. And yeah, flexibility, I, I would think that, that that makes a lot of sense and something that needs to be negotiated. And when you have um, multiple partners bringing that level of advocacy on your behalf and you're bringing those numbers, I would think the receptivity to that should should be. So that means stay open 24 hours if you need be, right? Bring in all the staff. Not 24 need. hours, but <laughs> yeah. for a while, at least yeah. for three days, for those three days. Okay, yeah. okay. And, and with advanced planning, yep. we can flex. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Mr. Higgins, what, do you, what would you say really stands out um, for you as one of the key reasons why you would choose a facility, well, a site I, city? Sure. I, I, I mentioned the relationship piece and the relationship we have visit Detroit. Like, again, I mentioned we're, we're, we know we're in good hands, which, which, uh, which helps us out quite a bit. But also at, at Connect, we're bringing meeting and event planners and sporting event planners, that everything from single hotel size all the way up to, and we just had a planner register last week that's 35,000 attendees. So trying to find a destination that works for everybody, um, that you know, they may have a strong reputation on the sports side or the meeting side, but with Detroit, I think it's all the above. And so being able to bring all those attendees to town, but being able to meet in a destination that actually has a, a perception or reputation of being able to host different meetings and events and sporting events of different sizes makes a big difference for us. Okay, and I've heard flexibility from Mr. Holm, and so I wanna build on that and ask you, because we have everyone here that has their own tree of connectivity within uh, the hospitality services. What can that industry do specifically to really meet your needs, to ensure that things go well and that it is a successful event? Yeah, I think uh, being open to what, and, and that's just part of our job, right? You, you see the RFP and, and you, you understand, hey, you need X number of rooms, this kind of space, but what, what, are, the, um, what are the intangible things that, that are important? And, uh, for wrestling, we'll use the wrestling championship, very unique nutritional uh, needs for those 330 wrestlers. So uh, having flexibility for, for meal prep and, and restaurants and things of that nature. We have a very, um, uh, I shouldn't say very old because they're in my age group, but uh, an, older, <laughs> an older fan changes base. changes over time, right? <laughs> right, uh, an older fan base. Um, so appealing to, to, to that demographic, um, predominantly male uh, and appealing to that demographic, the types of things, uh, engagements that they want to see. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's steaks and potatoes or it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, sports bar type, types of meals and accommodations, things like that. Um, providing breakfast uh, as, a, as an option at the hotels, um, flexibility and, and parking uh, for, for, for those folks. Things of that nature. Um, one other thing that's been been really good, and I've encouraged cities to do or communities. What's unique about your community? What 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 do you offer uh, in your community that that's unique from anywhere else that we've gone? Highlight that and share that because those are the types of things that they remember. What we also have, especially in wrestling and many of our our college athletic sports, we have very loyal fans, right? And these are repeat folks. They go year after year after year. Mm -hmm. And if they don't like a site, I hear about it and we don't go back. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay, and how do you get that feedback? I'm just curious. Directly, we we, we do which uh, survey. Uh, People are calling direct your people. cell phone directly. <laughs> yeah, they have that too. Yeah. <laughs> They'll find me in the in, in the concourses. But uh, we are fortunate to get really good because of the the repeat uh, or return attendees. We're fortunate to get uh, pretty high percentage of uh, returns on our feedback surveys. Okay. Mr. Fantuso, do you want to chime in about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about it more from the group travel experience, not just the convention. I mean, you know, the convention hotels, convention center know what they're doing. They're always willing to work with the client coming in with whatever their needs are. But, but when, when I think of flexibility, I think about it from the group travel experience, the, the tour operators, the bus operators that are bringing people to Detroit, that are going to the museums, that are staying in hotels. You know, we are just coming out of the pandemic. We're just rebuilding that segment of the travel industry. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what it's gonna look like. We don't know if we're gonna have 50 people on a bus or 30 people on a bus. We don't know if they're all gonna book six months ahead or if they're gonna book six days ahead. So all of the venues that want that group travel business are going to have to be flexible going forward. That's absolutely critical if we want to start rebuilding this market. Okay. Mr. Higgins, you want to skip? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's really keeping in mind remembering that this, what Connect is, is it's, a, it's an event for people who plan events. And you never know what's going, who, what perception or what, what, um, what memory they're going to come, come home with afterwards. If, We've had situations in other cities with other events where somebody will ask, a meeting planner from somewhere will ask somebody at the hotel um, you know, for a, re a restaurant recommendation. And you know, if it's a Bellman or somebody, well, they'll say, well, there's nothing around here. You need to take an Uber over there. That, beca that perception becomes their reality until it's shown otherwise. So just being able to make sure that every one of the Connect attendees, you never know who has the opportunity. They may have something out to bid, and Detroit's on a short list. And this experience is what they're, they're using this as a site inspection or something like that to be able to come and actually test drive the, uh, the hospitality community. So I think that's a, a big key uh, piece of Connect this August. Okay. I think we're making progress. Are you learning? Is there some good information here, you think? You feel that way? Okay. Um, let's talk about, there, this is a give and take. There's reciprocity because you will be giving and you will be giving. What can you say that your organization will be bringing to this area? Yeah, so if, again, from our perspective, we're not only bringing a show, but you know, much like Connect, we're bringing people who are going to bring people back into the future. You know, the group travel industry, or specifically motor coach travel, we moved about 500 million passengers before the pandemic. It's almost as many as the airlines do. Okay. But people don't think of it in that context, but we move a tremendous amount of people. When we come here, we bring an immediate $3 million in economic activity, and the induced economic activity in most cities ends up being somewhere between six and seven million. So it's a, it's a large footprint that we bring, but the bigger footprint is bringing business back year after year. Okay. And we've seen that when we go to a city, the potential to grow the group travel business is anywhere from 15 to 25% in those years after. So it can be 20%, 20%, 20%. But really, that's what we're bringing to the city, not just an event at that time, but future business for hotels, restaurants, theaters, everybody who's in that group travel space. Right, because the group travel, um, the individuals who attend, you're expecting that they will get their impression from being here. Yep for your purpose, your speed dating moment, yes. right? And then they're going to later plan their own events here yep. and or plan tours that come through Detroit because they now see the city. Absolutely, they see everything the city has to offer and say, you know what, we haven't been here. You know, maybe that, as you mentioned, the perception issue is that this wasn't a place that we wanted to bring our groups. We wanted right. to bring them to Nashville or someplace that we thought was more exciting. Mm -hmm. And they get here and they think, yeah, this is why, why haven't we been doing this? This is where we need to bring them in the future. Right. There's a lot of product here and a lot of reason to come. Okay. And I, for me, I think of uh, Mr. Uh, Holman, you spoke about um, drivability. I always think walkability. I think, you know, once I get off the airplane and I get in the hotel, I want to know where can I just get out and walk? I'm wondering how much that plays a role in, in choice. Yeah, it's huge for us, for, for some sports, right? So the wrestling championships, uh, men's and women's basketball, Final Fours, things that um, where the arena is, uh, is a central uh, 
or focal point and within the community. The hotels are closed. You want to come and park on Thursday and don't see your car again until Sunday. That's that's great. I live in Indianapolis. Uh, that's one of the, the wonderful benefits and attractions that uh, one of your competitors has, but they've just hosted the CFP and hosted the, the Final Four many times, have hosted the Super Bowl. And that's that's one of the takeaways that people really, really like. So you, you get there and, you, and you're done with it. For us, what we bring to our community uh, beyond the, beyond the direct economic impact, and and we don't w we stop doing economic e impact studies. What we do are direct spin analysis, right? We know we know how many hotel rooms, what we're pit spending for venues, and we're talking direct spins. I don't know how many times that turns over in your community. We you know you guys probably know that better, and, and but we've gotten out of that business, so we know that bringing our championship, regardless, depending on which championship it is, brings this amount of dollars into your communities, this number of room nights, this number of gallons of gas bought and things of, uh, of that nature. And, and then we know we've got 90 championships, right? So that, that's the value that we feel like we bring to you. If it, if it goes well with this, there are 89 other opportunities. Okay, okay very good. And Mr. Higgins, you are bringing to Detroit <laughs> well, much like Peter, there'll be that direct impact <laughs> while we're here, mm -hmm. but I just checked our registration data this morning, and we have, on an average of the planners that have registered so far, they're planning about an average of nine events there themselves each year. Average budget size is just a, sh just a little bit under $100,000 for each one, um, and over 80% are anticipating signing contracts with hotels before the end of this year. So the value and the potential for the short-term business is there, but then also that lasting impression that can be left that will benefit down the road was, will, uh, will exist also. All right, so I'm hearing uh, growth like the concentric circles. You're going to be here, and then that will continue to grow based upon people's impressions. Okay. Well, we all know that we've been living a little differently when we talk about meeting, masks, hand sanitizer, registration of your vaccination cards. Um, all of these have to do with obviously the aftermath and we're still in the pandemic, you know, with variants and et cetera. What impact is that having, um, even though business, clearly we talked about how business, we've still been able to book a lot of events here in Detroit, but what does it look like? What would the differences be? You wanna start Mr. Pantuso? Yeah, it, it, creates a, uh, it creates a little bit of uncertainty, mm -hmm. obviously for the attendee or for the delegate. Now, we just had our, our show, we had our marketplace in Texas uh, a few weeks ago. And I, I will tell you that while it was a little bit smaller as people are still struggling to kind of get back, those that went had a fabulous time. They had a great time. And we had all the protocols in place, and including the mask requirement. Uh, we use the same system that you're using here to check vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would also tell you that, you know, I saw on social media or got contacted from you know, maybe a hundred people that got COVID while they were there. Mm. And every one of them was healthy. Every one of them had a head cold. And every one of them said to me, I'd, I'd go again, even if I knew I was gonna get COVID because right. it was that important to get back and start coming back out of the shell and getting back into the planning cycle again. You know, it's so important for their business, not just at the show, but as I said, you know, a year or two down the road. So if you wanna do business with a group travel planner, with a motor coach company, with a tour operator, You've got to start doing it now if you want their business a year or two years from now. And so starting that cycle was absolutely critical, notwithstanding the fact that, you know, it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable or challenging to deal with. I, I was really struck by an article I, I saw on the news, I think it was yesterday, talking about, you know, 12 months from now, we're, we're all going to be treating COVID as the flu. Right. I mean, we're all, our immune systems are going goal. to be built up. That's, that's, it's, it, the whole system is going to change. We're all going to be, you know, taking shots and we're all going to, like we do our flu shots, but we're all going to be relatively healthy right. going forward. Right. Are there some differences in your planning now because of COVID? Yeah, considerably. Uh, it's been, um, certainly it was a, a difficult time for all of us, right? Um, in the sports arena, in the sports industry, uh, we really had to, reevaluate how we were, were doing, um, doing our work and how we were preparing um, facilities and, and uh, championships and individuals to participate. Um, and, and we're still doing that. What we have gone back to or, or, or relaxed a bit is having um, universal protocols, right? What, what we do in Detroit may not be the same thing we do in 
you know, in Illinois or, or a different state or community. We've really started to rely on what's, what's that community seeing and what are the requirements for that community. We still have some protocols around tiering for participants and um, some requirements for them, both pre-arrival and potentially on-site regarding vaccination status or pre-arrival testing. But as it relates to fan attendees or capacity limits or uh, vaccination checks for attendees, general public, we've really um, looked to uh, adopt what that local community is, is saying and what they're doing there to, to relegate or to dictate how those things are happening. Okay. Yeah. And Mr. Higgins, I would imagine maybe the planners are sharing information about systems and ways that they can adapt. Yeah, in, in quite a few ways. We, um, we were one of the few industry shows, meetings, meetings industry shows, that actually um, held an event in 2020. We had to bounce around to three different cities before we actually found one that, that stuck just to match the different guidelines and things. But we learned a lot there. And in 2020, we had a, it was a 28-point uh, Connect Safe and Clean plan uh, that we put, we rolled out, and it is constantly evolving. So. We'll have the safe and clean plan in effect again this year. Um, we're, we're having constant conversations with the Visit Detroit folks to just match wherever we are right there. But I agree with, with Peter. We're hoping that we get to the point where it's, um, we, we do treat it like, like the flu um, and be able to, to build that. But I think the biggest difference for us is in 2019, it was all about attendance promotion. Now it's about confidence promotion for us and trying to make sure because everyone's coming in at a different level of confidence. Um, last year at our show in Tampa, about 75% of our attendees, that was their first business trip since COVID took stage. Right. So it's just trying to match everyone's comfort level and making sure that everyone knows that if it's, that everything's being done to keep them safe while they're here. But then at the same time, if there are those folks that they're not as concerned, making sure that it's not going to be so buttoned up that they can't um, relax and have fun and get business done while they're here. Not so buttoned up. I immediately went to a visual like, yeah, we just want to, you know, not throw <laughs> caution to the wind, but you want to be able to get back to living. I think everyone is enjoying that part. Living means business. It means interactivity and networking. So we don't have much time left, but I think it's just really important. We can do a quick round table where you would give us what would be one of the most important uh, takeaways that you want the audience to have as they go back and they can share with their office and their other associates the best way to showcase Detroit so we can be sure you're here and you're going to continue to come back. Well, I think, I think number one is you've already got what we all need. You know, no question about that. Number two, that spirit of hospitality clearly exists here. I mean, from everybody that I talk to that are my members, that are, they're all excited about the, uh, the American bus marketplace and bus world coming here. And, and lastly, the facilities that you've got are already in place, makes it a great destination. And it's a unique destination for us where we're gonna see things that we haven't seen for a long, long time. So we're excited, you guys are ready for us. Okay, that's a good sign. Mr. Holman? Well, I don't know if I can add much of that. I, I would just uh, reaffirm kind of the uniqueness. What, what, what can you provide in your community, at your facility, and your business that, that's unique to, to this community that we can't find anywhere else, right? The venues are what they are, your travel is what it is, the, the number of rooms you have, but what's unique about the experience that we can provide those that we're bringing to your community? I can think of some things. I won't make my list. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Higgins. I don't want to step on your time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one, just register for the show. Work with Visit Detroit. Come there. There's different discounts, and we can work different things out. But just that a strong showing from the hospitality community, um, either on site at the show or just in town while our folks are out and about, um, that that becomes a lasting impression, and that's big. And Detroit, just just keep being yourself. It's it's so refreshing to see so many. Smiling, happy faces. I don't think I've ever been to a city before where so many people I interact with in the hospitality community are actually from the hospitality community. Okay. And that, that says a lot um, about, about Detroit and the spirit here. That's us, right? Let's give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank you.